Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Andy, 45 North Farm, coming at you this morning from the roof of my cabin. And uh, doing a little video today to go over the solar power system that we just got installed here a couple weeks ago. And uh, it's been running awesome. So I uh, decided to start up at the top and uh, give you a little look, see to how we got these things wired in here, uh, what's going on with them, and uh, how we got to this point. So uh, really, uh, what happened was I wanted to get some uh, electric here in the cabin. And I'm just going to move forward here a little bit. And um, so I called the power company up and I said, hey, uh, did my research. Saw that they filed with the uh, the Public Utilities Commission that they'd pull back 800 foot, I think, to, to connect. So I thought, good deal. Um, you know, I can get a service put out there because uh, I'm going to have a house here sooner or later. And then um, from that temporary service, I can I can pull over to the cabin and have my electric uh, get me through. And uh, so I gave them a call and, uh, you know, I think I paid 75 bucks or something. They came out and surveyed the area. And I uh, get a call back, and they said, yep, yeah, you know, we're there. Um, it's going to be about 6800 bucks." And I said, you know, well, wait a minute. You know, I saw in your, your filing that it would be, you know, free up to 800 feet. And they said, well, yeah, um, well, additionally, you also have to have a permitted house with a permitted well and a permitted septic. Um, and if you know me, of course, I had a couple questions. <laughs> I said, well, what does that have to do with, with getting electric? Um, you know, can I just, just have that on there? And they say, yeah, well, we can pull it, um, but it's going to be 6,800 bucks. Um, but we'll refund you the money if you have, uh, you know, the house and everything in within five years. And, uh, obviously I didn't know, you know, where I was going to be at in five years. And I said, well, I'm not going to do that. Be out 6,800 bucks. And then on top of it, you know, there's a, an additional, I think it's 40 bucks, even if you don't use any electricity, uh, that you pay monthly. So, uh, got me a little irritated and, uh, you know, wasted 75 bucks for all that. And nobody could have told me up front, which was frustrating. Uh, so I started looking into alternatives. Um, you know, in, in another video, I talk about the, uh, the rainwater collection system I made. And, you know, I had a solar panel up there to power a, a DC pump. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me. And uh, so I was like, well, maybe we can't do solar for the, for the entire cabin. See what, you know, that works. So I started looking into it, uh, checking on prices. It wasn't too bad. Um, and I think, you know, the, the main factor was knowing that, um, I was, I was throwing up the deuces at, uh, at the electric company. Cause at that point I was irritated, you know, the typical stuff, the, the little man gets, you know, crapped on on a daily basis by corporate America type things. So I says, well, I'm going to do it myself then. And, uh, so we went and got the uh, panels ordered, the, uh, power control module, inverter and batteries. Um, and it wasn't all that bad. And it was just a matter of, uh, finding ways to get things uh, mounted up here on the on the roof and then trapping wires back in. But uh, thus far, this thing's been going for about three or four weeks now. And uh, it's been nothing but but great to have. Um, I run a coffee pot off it, a fan. Um, I got a small refrigerator that runs off it and my lights and everything else. And the greatest part of it is I'm not plugged into anything and um, I don't have to worry about the public utilities or, or anybody. So... I guess that's the best part of it all, but we're going to break this video down <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, again, again, geez, and uh, kind of show you the components and the, and the process that we use to install. So uh, stick around. We'll show you what we got. All righty. So like I said, we're up here on the roof and uh, I went with Renogy products and uh, they got a great website. I've used their stuff in the past. Um, by no means am I getting paid to, to plug them. Um, I'm getting no kickbacks of any type, but, uh, I, like I said, I use their products. They've worked and, um, I like to stick with what works. So right here, I have a setup of four, um, 200 watt solar panels. Um, and, uh, you can see here, I went with, uh, these are all from Renogy and they're wired in series. So I have 800 watts total. Uh, feeding down to uh, the power control module, and that's located in the cabin. But you can see these uh, brackets here, the tilt panel part of the panels. Um, those are from Renogy. I looked all over for something that, that I thought would be beneficial to what we have going on here. Um, we're facing south right now, and uh, right now they get awesome sun. Uh, my only concern is going to be the winter because the sun uh, is really, really south from this location. And 
you can see we got this big tree right here uh, but it won't have its leaves so it shouldn't really pose that much of a problem but the sun really barely crests um, that tree line that we're looking at over there so we'll find out and then between the snow too um, so it's all a big experiment we don't really know what's going to happen um, but hoping for the best on that so if we come back here one of the other issues that um, looked at was how to uh, mount this to the roof I got and you can see it's the corrugated steel and uh, makes for mounting interesting so we went with these these are the s5 protea brackets and they basically excuse the noise here it's still wet up here latch on to that rib part and the screw goes right in sets it and grabs it um, there's a rubberized piece that goes behind each part of that um, and which waterproofs it and as well as i use the good old flex seal as found on tv and uh just did a little extra sealing on it because we like i said we get a lot of snow and ice so i just want to make sure we don't have any leaks but uh you know this thing is rock solid i don't know if you can see that i mean it's not moving and uh we've had a bunch of storms come through and and these things are aren't going anywhere so i'm gonna come back here to uh where we have sorry about that walking on a wet roof and here's where our panels connect and I used you can see these guys here and also another product through Renogy that I bought were these uh, splits and basically you just plug them in and uh, it brings four panels into one and I believe that these are what is this 18 gauge I don't know if it shows it on there if we can get it close enough probably not but i think the panels themselves are 18 gauge and it comes back to 14. so you got to keep in mind your uh the electrical flow that's going to be going through those wires and gauge those appropriately so that way you don't have any risk of fire or, or anything else but you can see these panels um they're all doing good and then uh of course just try to maintain a clean install on it uh, I don't want to mess. And uh, come back here. Like I said, bear with me. It's still wet. I should wait until the afternoon. And uh, decided not to to cut a hole through the roof itself. Um, and uh, went with this. Oh, sorry. This guy right here. And uh, at, you know, I mean, we did cut a hole, but it's actually in the back, and I'll show you here in a minute. Um, and once again, just took some some roofing tar and caulk and I uh, made a good seal around it. So haven't had any leaks so far. Um, everything's worked really, really good. So I can't complain and these things get a lot of light. So let me reposition here and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so here it is from a different angle. I'm up on the ladder on the back side of the cabin. Um, and you can see the, the layout. Uh, kind of had to, to guesstimate too on the position of the panels as you can see there um i didn't want to have these front panels cast a shadow on the back panels there so we kind of defeat the purpose so that's something you want to keep in mind and consider too um i might run into some issues later on this fall when the sun starts going lower um but the way i got these panels set up i can drop these two closer ones um so it doesn't cast a shadow on the back ones and i can go from there so I think it should work out pretty good. Um, just like anything, though, when you're doing it doing it by yourself, you don't know, and it's going to be a live and learn type scenario. So um, try to plan for everything and and be ready to to overcome those obstacles when it doesn't work out. Um, coming down the ladder, I said there's that. This also is another Renogy product, and uh, like once again, I am not getting paid. I'm not getting endorsed. I have no affiliation with Renogy whatsoever. Um, their products just have worked really good for me, and um, can't complain these are those s5 protea brackets like i said um found these i think i bought them off the internet out of company had a had a pretty good deal going out of colorado um but what i did is i punched through here and i'm not quite done with all this yet either but uh came through that doesn't go through into my living quarters so decided to punch through there and then 
drill my hole in. Didn't leave a drip loop. Hopefully that doesn't come back and, and bite me at all, but it is pretty uh, um, covered, you know, from the weather and stuff. I shouldn't have any issues. I am going to come back and use some uh, some loom on this, that flex loom, to cover these wires um, just to give them a little added protection from the winter too. And I think I'll probably do that up top. Um, but for now, everything's working good. Uh, not a whole lot of extreme weather to worry about. So I'm going to be getting down off the ladder and I'll, uh, I'll show you the rest of the system here. All right, so leading down from the roof, here's the cabinet that I built. And uh, this is another learning lesson. And I'd, uh, I was like, well, I had the framing nailer out. Let me uh, let me just try to knock something out real quick. Um, using a framing nailer to build, I guess, furniture isn't a good idea. So <laughs> um, I'll have my alternate ways of doing that in the future. But did end up with this. This is still a good good shelf. Uh, kind of designed it for these batteries. So we'll go talk about these real quick down here. These are the uh, Renogy 12 volt. They're 200 amp hour batteries. Um, and I have two of them and uh, they are wired in series. And uh, so what happens is really uh, the concept of this is the power comes in and uh, we got much room to play with here. So the wiring comes in right here through this uh, uh, circuit breaker. And then that circuit breaker comes up here and powers our charge controller. And uh, this is a Renogy 60 amp hour. It's an MPPT charge controller. And this is like the brains of the operation. You can see it's got an LED readout. Um, says, you know, what we got, what, 17 volts coming in. Oops, sorry. Off the uh, panels. 259 watts. And that's what it's pumping out. Um, 18.3 amps. So that's going to the batteries and that in turn. So this is all a DC system. And uh, to, let me just kind of jump ahead. And I have our DC bus bars back here. And then coming uh, to our components. Uh, I have here a 300 amp and that feeds the uh, that's you know coming from the bus bars, and that feeds our 3,000 watt inverter. It's a pure sine wave inverter, also from Renogy. Um, and then we have our 60 amp circuit breaker um, that protects the batteries. So we got from the panels to the charge controller, um, bus bars to the uh, the um, inverter. And then bus bars to the battery. So at any given time, I can pull one of these components out. Um, and they're all protected too in case, you know, we have a, a surge or anything like that. Um, these are pretty cool. A friend of mine kicked me out of these. These are the Marine. Oh, and we lost our, our juice. So um, uh, kick these on. Uh, I was going to buy the inline ones, and he showed me these that are way better um, really clean install easy to get to if you need to turn something off like I turn uh, the inverter off uh, when I'm not around so I don't have to worry about power going to it uh, just another safety measure but uh, those work really good those are those marine circuit breakers and then here is the 3000 watt inverter and uh, we got everything packed in here really well some of the shrink wrap, you know, we had to, we had to change. You got to do what, what you got. Um, everything works awesome. This whole system here, and I got extra room over here. Oh, also an, an additional thing my friend told me about is this BT2 little module. And uh, what that does is it goes off of Bluetooth. And uh, you can check the status of your, your uh, system with your phone. Which is really cool because you can see how it's performing, um, where you're at, capacity wise, all that good stuff. So I think it was about 20 or 30 bucks and it was well worth every penny because it's kind of neat. You can just check that out. Um, and then off of uh, the inverter, uh, there we have our three plugs there that you can run to. And then I used Romax, 12, 12 2 Romax, 
and uh, we use that to power up the uh, AC panel. So it's just kind of another view of how we got things wired up in here. I know it's uh, probably not the best little tight quarters, but um, like I said, the Renogy 60 amp MPPT power control module, 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and the uh, 12 volt 200 amp hour batteries wired in series. So everything's been rocking and rolling. Um, I run this size fridge. It's got a freezer component as well. Um, that handles that no problem. I got the coffee maker on right now. Uh, I run a fan, my lights, um, and it has no issues. Uh, everything's better off if you do it during the day because then usually the, the batteries are powered and this power control module can take uh, the energy and run whatever other components you are. So I've run an air compressor, um, circular saws, sanders, uh, everything else. And basically it just that power control module takes that that electricity direct to those components um, and uh, I have no issues and uh, it's an awesome system and it's really exceeded my expectations of, of what it should be so uh, let me get this shut back up move that refrigerator and I'll show you how we wired up that uh, electrical box because that was an interesting piece too um, I'm sure uh, we can get a lot of comments of you know you probably shouldn't have done a b c or d but it works and uh, we'll just go with that so I'll be right back So this is that Renogy app I was talking about. Um, shows right now the battery's in flow, but it talks about the battery information, uh, the percentage that it's at, the solar info, the volts, the amps, the solar power. Uh, pretty neat. You know, it's got some historical values in there, so it's kind of neat to check and uh, keep your eye on. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I went with it. Shows the overall status of the system. All right, so back here to the... Uh, AC panel. Everything I wired up in this cabin is uh, AC. And that was one of the challenges that I faced, you know, doing it again. I might go more of the DC route, but this does give me a lot of flexibility to, uh, to do what I want. So here's my panel. Um, still kind of a mess, but um, keep in mind, I have nothing... Uh, connected to the grid. So this is all off grid. Um, you know, we don't have to worry about back feeding, uh, this and that. But when I had this panel originally, so prior to doing the solar power system, I had um, uh, generator power. So outside I got a generator uh, connection, 240 connection, um, it ran through and then came to this breaker here uh, which is a double pole 15 amp matches uh, what I had on my generator and um, this particular breaker then powered both of the bus bars on this panel so it worked out great um, didn't have any issues at all um, the one thing I hated was uh, the noise the generator noise um, it just you know if you wanted it on for heat in the winter you know good luck sleeping uh, I'm just one of those guys, you know, it's, it's got to be decently quiet. And that's why I like being up here because it's quiet. So, uh, you know, in a pinch it worked. It was great, but didn't really give me the results I was looking for. So fast forward to the solar. Um, still kept the same setup. So actually I haven't messed with it yet, but I do believe I still can uh, run my generator um, if need be. Um, but I do have to turn off the feed from my uh, solar system. So my solar system set, like I said earlier, by this 12-2 that comes in off of, uh, the inverter and, uh, we ran Romex and that powers the AC, uh, bus bar here. And then we ran a jumper over to this, uh, AC bus bar right here. Um, wasn't sure how it would work, if it would work, uh, but it works. Uh, everything's powered off it. We have no issues. Um, you know, the only thing I wish that we could, if there's a, a different breaker, I could run this 100 amp breaker here. So, um, you know, if I could swap that out, I would. Uh, one of the problems we ran into that boggled our mind, I still have to clean this panel up somewhat. You can see all of our neutrals down here. Um, we had uh, neutrals bonded to ground um, on all of our, our bars. So what that was doing was uh, tripping the, uh, the, the ground fault in the inverter. 
and we couldn't get it to go. So uh, did a little research on it. Um, like I said, there's nothing, not a whole lot on the internet um, uh, of people showing what they did um, to learn. So it was, it was learn as you go. Um, so we had the fire extinguisher standing by, of course, <laughs> in case something went up. But well, there's a will, there's a way. Um, so we ended up tying all of our neutrals together. And I do have to come back and do something different. But um, I don't know if you can see right here. Uh, these are all tied up actually with one of those um, bolts uh, that you use for grounding to attach like a grounding uh, wire to another wire to the grounding rod. So that worked out really good and, and all of our grounds then are still on um, the ground bus bar here and those are going to earth ground outside. So um, everything as far as grounding is up to code on that outside. Um, but the in internal workings here were, were something we had to figure out um, as we went. And uh, so that was one of them. So we tied our neutrals together. Um, that is, you know, from the inverter as well. And um, grounds are going uh, accordingly. So everything works. Um, like I said, I'm very happy with it. Um, you know, total disclaimer. I don't know if this is quote unquote right, uh, but it does work. So, you know, if you're watching this video, um, you know, thinking you're getting expert advice, you're not. So that's my disclaimer. Um, I would say do it what, with what works for your application and uh, experiment with it to make sure it's it's what you need because that's what we did and um, it worked out really good. So um, there we have it. That's our, our panel in a nutshell. Uh, let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. Uh, we have those jumpers there and uh, I didn't know if those would really work. Um, I'm obviously not an electrician by trade um, and just had to figure things out. So it's it's working and uh, haven't had any, uh, any mishaps or, or trips or anything like that. So that's the panel. All right. Kind of show you what we got going on. I don't know how well this will turn out. Um, here's our lights up and running, actually. So this is our front porch. And uh, we got these two smaller LED lights. These are all AC. We're going to go in here in a minute. And uh, I've got these other four inch lights here um, that run off it and uh, really awesome. I used to kick a lot of light. You can change these lights too. These are cool. The uh, different, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, the colors. I, I guess it's called heat or something. Um, this part of me, I don't really know. <laughs> but um, well, you can see the fan. Fan's rocking and rolling. So that's huge. Uh, I can reverse that for the winter time um, because I have my wood stove and it's nice to keep so all that heat rises up there um, to circulate that around the cabin. And um, these four lights here, once again, too, they're four inch um, waffle style lights and they got those uh, controllers in there. And uh, then up here, I got those lights that go in that part of the loft, which is really cool too. Those work good when uh, you just want to hang out on the inside and have some accent lights in those to go up there. Um, and then let me turn this off. Coffee pot, which you can see that thing's on. This is all off solar power. I don't have any connections to the outside world, I guess, if you want to put it. And uh, pardon my mess. And here's our refrigerator. So, you know, pretty... Pretty decent size for what I need. Uh, like I said, I'm off grid up here. <laughs> Don't need a whole heck of a lot. And um, everything works out good. I have uh, power plugs. Just, you know, I think every, I probably went overboard on them. Probably about every four feet, five foot. Um, I have power outlets. So uh, works out pretty good. Oh, those are for that. But, um, yeah, no complaints. This thing's awesome. Once again, like I said, I want to give uh, credit and shout out to uh, to my brother Chris. Um, I won't say your last name, Chris, but uh, you know who you are. Uh, thanks for for coming up and giving me a hand with all the system and uh, getting me to where I need to be. Your your uh, knowledge is amazing, and uh, appreciate all your hard work getting this thing going. So we'll uh, we'll close it out here in a minute. So that's our, our uh, solar power system for the cabin. Um, like I said, got, you know, spawned by the uh, the power company trying to stick it to me and not really having that kind of funding and, you know, the cost benefit to it really didn't pan out. So 
I guess where there's a will, there's a way. Um, you figure out, do it yourself. Um, by no means am I a professional at any of this. Um, but at the end of the day, it's off grid, it's D D Y I and, um, it works. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of things I could have done differently, uh, could have done better. Uh, but for the first time around, pretty happy with how things turned out. Um, we'll see what happens in another season. Uh, you know, how this thing pans out, but right now I was very, very happy with it. And, uh, if you like what you see out there, hit, hit the, the like button, subscribe to my channel. There'll be more of this kind of stuff going on. Um, and drop us a comment. If you got any questions I can answer, I'll be happy to do so. And uh, check out our, our videos in the future. You guys take care. Have a good one.